Oh, that was a great success. <clears throat> I think you'll all agree. Also, my chair is apparently creature than usual tonight. That's great. Anyway, six years More later. Six years since I entered that strange house in Boston. Six and a half years, me, I guess. It was just five months ago. Amnesia, the doctors called it. Probably brought on by acute mental stress. I remember investigating the far side of the library. There was screaming. According to the police report, they had searched the house for hours. Only to find me later collapsed on the floor. When my eyes opened and I spoke, my colleagues recoiled in fear. There was something unnatural in my voice and blank gaze. They committed me to Arkham Asylum, where I was diagnosed with severe schizophrenia. As it became clear that I presented no danger to either myself or others, I was released from the asylum's care. I have learned little of my activities in the six years that followed. The accounts I've been able to piece together show much of my time was spent in travel and especially in Colton. I maintain a fanatical infatuation. What are the mysteries of the world? That one's missing. Volumes concerning witch cults and dark legends, often in languages unfamiliar to my own. When I reawakened five months ago, exactly six years after entering that house in Boston, no trace was left of what had been a secondary personality. I was myself again, or at least what I believed myself to be. Return to normal life has been a painful process. In recent days, my dreams have been plagued by cosmic landscapes and I've become fearful of my own reflection. I'm beginning to remember things from that day, more than six years past, that I've told Well, apparently the thing is, he lost his memory of Jack the past Walters. six years. Uh, hello, Mr. Walters. My name's Arthur Anderson. And he developed an unknown personality. And that's what that was taken to the asylum. Did you get my package? Um, hold on. I know he's being hired to look for someone. What exactly do you want from me, Mr. Anderson? Um, it's one of my store managers, you see. Brian's his name. Brian Burnham. Nice lad. He disappeared recently from the first national grocery store in Innsmouth. Innsmouth? I eh, never heard of it. Uh, it's a small fishing town on the coast, not far from Arkham. Uh, I'd like to see you in person before you leave. Hold on there a minute. I didn't agree to take this... J <sighs> what the hell? I'll be here all day anyway. So I guess we're taking the case, because I don't think uh, Mr. Walters really has any better options right now, also. Uh, what if I do this? Will that help? Uh, yeah, no, not really. Towel. So we're being told to look for this kid called Brian Burton. And a robbery that happened in the store that he was managing. Which was apparently a break in despite the fact that the kid had the keys and he's missing. And yeah, this Hinsmouth place. Which has stories of mixed blood. Does not like outsiders. And we feel a little apprehensive for 
some reason. And well, we have good reason too, as we will learn very quickly. Driver, how far did we stop? All both there. I'll drop you at the town square at least. Why lock the gates? Keeps out wanderers looking for work. You know what those folks like to have interfering with our affairs. Is the bus from Arkham always this empty? Aye, and we prefer it that way. Not many come to it, but... But what about trade? Surely the port needs business. Isbeth has the means to look after her own. So yeah, we're taking the bus to this place, I guess, but... Looks kind of empty. And apparently there's a headless statue right there in the middle of town square. Head to the line. So apparently this bus does the... Yeah, we somehow know that that's his name. The Arkham Innsmouth Newport route. I don't know why it says Newport, but apparently it does. Hmm, got anything else to say? Could you direct me to the first national grocery store? I hear they have a shop in town. I don't know nothing about that. Oh, well... You see, I'm looking for a young lad called Brian Burnham. I'm a friend of the family. He worked in the store. Don't know who you're talking about, Bella. Hmm. So this guy doesn't really want to help out. The First National is a large chain. You sure you haven't seen it? I'm sure. Stop bothering me with questions. Hmm. He hasn't seen it, even though it's kind of uh, right over there. You can see it from where we're standing. It says First National right there. But I guess he just doesn't really want to be helpful. And if we keep pestering him... The First National is a large chain. Oh, we just start repeating sure that. sure you haven't seen it? I'm sure. Stop bothering me with questions. So... Well, what about this guy? I'm looking for Brian Burnham. Can't help you. Well, if we task directly for the missing guy, I don't think we'll get any help that way. And this is a place with the door open. It is the Gilman Hotel. If you ought to read the sign, we can find out. Outsiders coming, snooping around with a wanted. Say that a little louder. Okay. Well, apparently they got a hotel, so it's kind of weird that a town that apparently totally hates outsiders. This place looks awfully lively. And here's the front this guy. Evening. Hi. The name's Jack Walters. I'm just visiting. You don't say, sir. Gilman. Charlie Gilman. I run this here hotel of an evening. You got any rooms? I'd not rightly know that for sure. All habits cleaning rooms at present. Them's from out of town can leave a horrid mess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Hello again. Yeah? I'm after directions to the First National Grocery Store. And I'm busy. So stop your pestering me with questions. Hmm. So I guess this guy that doesn't want to talk to Jack. stringing me along with a lot of nothing about nothing. What, this fella? Hello, Gilman. What are you wanting now? Strange thing about that Burnham lad. Burnham? Can't rightly says I know what you're talking about. That's odd. He was all over the Arkham Press. Must have been a bit of a local scandal. Them's matters for the police, stranger. Innsmouth's not a town for rumoring and talking. Well, yeah. I think that's pretty business. much just repetition so far. Can't you see, I'm busy. Stop bothering me with your talking. Sorry. Try to right. know this guy. Plenty sure you are. 
Let us know if he doesn't want to talk anymore. He's not going to be any help. And only a crazy fool would spend the night. Wink, wink. Well, there's a very shiny key back He's there. He's not going to be any help. And only a crazy fool would spend the night. Well, I guess we can't get out of the cart yet, so let's make ourselves scarce. If I can find out how I came into this place. There we go. Because we're supposed to be looking for that guy that we were hired to look for. And well, there's... Well, we can go straight to the place where he worked. We can pretty much see it with our own, own eyes. There's the first national grocery store and the door. Well, apparently it's been barricaded and the door is boarded shut. So that's a great sign. And this place... Well, there's a cop right here. Hey. Who doesn't want to talk to us. I mean, Federal Street, because I guess this is a street, and, uh, well, this may not be entirely obvious, but this initiates the stealth section. Well, luckily the, the AI for enemies in this game is very poor, so we can very easily just sneak behind this guy and uh, duck into this side place. It won't open. So that we can wait for him to go around the back again and find another save icon. I take, you know, I think I'll save fairly frequently out of a uh, fear of crashes mostly. Even though that only happened to me once when I was playing this in full screen. And also kind of weird, something that only happened to me when I was playing in full screen was uh, I got some crazy motion sickness from playing this for a little bit. Nothing of interest. But when I started playing it in a window, it stopped. So I can say I know how that works, but apparently it did. And I guess the guy went around and isn't in the hallway anymore, and isn't in this end anymore, so we are free to it's unlocked. make our way inside. And apparently, yeah, this object right here, this shelves. They were pushed and left some scratch marks. Assorted paperwork, but nothing of any real interest. And apparently we can use that to block the door, so... Let's buy ourselves some private time here by doing that. Okay, and now let's have a look around, because this is the interior of the store. And our attention is immediately drawn to the medical box. Which we cannot pick up unless we go around the counter. How will? Well, Tail's empty. there's no money. There's a back room over here. And there's something in the safe. But before we mess with that, I think we need to take another quick look around this storefront place. It won't budge. It won't budge, so that door doesn't really lead anywhere. Nothing of interest. The vice, if no, that's a grinder. It kinda look like a vice, how oh, well. It's just there for decoration. There's the boarded door, the but glass has been broken. And there's scratch marks on the wood. Strange. There's broken glass and scratch marks on the wood. But why would Brian force entry when he had a set of keys? Would make sense for Brian to have forced entry. Why would someone break in through the front? Someone broke in through the front. Well, this makes no sense. Yep, this doesn't make a lot of These sense. These scratch marks look like they were made by some kind of animal. And the scratch marks were made by some kind of animal. Hmm. Also, wild cherry tonic apparently helps with jaundice. But if we go back behind the counter here, there's another door that it won't budge. Won't budge. There's a trap door on the floor. It looks like I need some sort of lifting handle to get it open. Yep. And uh, we can finally grab the medical box. And what that gives us is... Uh, gives us some of these medical supplies that we need to heal ourselves when we've taken an injury. Which are bandages, splints, sutures, and antidotes. And the most valuable ones, and the ones that we will be running low on for the most part, are sutures. But, well, there's also a trick to that, but I'll get to that when we actually need them. For now, let's grab this there's stuff. a bottle of bootleg rum and a wooden handle. Bootleg rum and a wooden handle. Well, I guess this would be Prohibition era. And, um, uh, someone's banging on the door that we blocked, so... 
right, let's try to escape. Even though that's the only escape route, or is it? Because now, if we stand in front of this and use the handle, we can lift the hatch and make our escape that way. Or not. Because if we do that, well, then that happens. Yep, that is what you have to do. Because that's the only thing you can do to continue. Because if you wait too long, that guy goes into the room and... ...takes your stuff and kicks you out. Which basically means you have to redo this part. It's not unwinnable. So let's grab some more of these supplies. Those are handily lying around and... Well, actually, do we need to use any of them? No. No, we are fine. Alright. Well, we can find another. It looks like a diary. It's gotta have some clues. Document a diary. And apparently we're gonna trap down here because the only way back up is busted. Well, if we look at the diary. Hmm. Well, apparently we missed a couple of documents on our way here. The Fellowship of Yith, or whatever the cult's name is, which is apparently the cult that was raided in the intro. Some bizarre cults are popping up due to religious freedom, that evil you see. The Fellowship was founded more than 20 years ago by Victor Holt, based on a revelation from beyond the confines of this world. Some stuff that's trying to communicate with him from across time, like a shadow, hmm. which may be out of time you might even say. Strange lights can be observed, which change color unpredictably. There are disturbing noises, screams of agony, oh boy. But the police could not act until that storm happened that we were caught on, or caught up in at the beginning. Hmm. So people want to figure out what they're up to, and I guess they succeeded. Reporter Howard Adelstone was killed. The Fellowship of Yig. No, Yig is a different thing. It's a snake thing. Pretty sure they got that mixed up with Yith, which is the correct name, but... Mr. Brian Burnham has been... Missing after the robbery. So this is pretty much just about the robbery that we're investigating right now. So what does the diary say? The guy does not like it here. This place is deader than dead. But, hmm, apparently he wants to bust up an old man wait safe, take a car and New York City with a woman. But doesn't look like he had much luck with that. So we're kind of trapped here after discovering that, so how do we get out? Well, we can discover that this ladder is something else that we can push along the rail here. But we can't really get upon it or anything. So what happens if we mess around with it just a bit? Well, we can find out about the structural integrity of this place. And end up in a place with the cellars filled with human remains. With spooky skeletons. These people must have died a long time ago. Or maybe someone likes big bones clean, I don't know. And make our escape into this photography room. There are some issues of the Innsmouth Courier lying here, and they're dated 1846. Which looks out over the window alleyway. Smashed. And I can see the back alley. And these pictures. Old photos of Innsmouth. Most of them have faded beyond recognition. Our faded old pictures of Innsmouth. Apparently we're not going to take any of them. Hmm. But we can get out. And pick up some ammo. 
that we will not be able to use because we have no weapons at this point. But we got some pistol ammo, it looks like. So let's be polite and close the door behind us and look at this old dilapidated printing press. The old printing press appears to have been sabotaged. <laughs> I don't suppose the fire helped it much either. So yeah, I don't think this thing is gonna get back in shape. Nope, nothing of interest. And nothing else of interest, it would seem. Hmm. Is that the only way to go? It won't open. I'm guessing the answer is gonna be yes. Or is it because this door is bolted, but we can unbolt it since since we're on the side that the has the bolts. Shut. Yes, I'm trying to do that. All right. I guess that will be the way out. So then, what is in here? Apparently, the answer is a dead woman. Ah, from the stench in here, this noose broad must have kicked it a few months back. This noose broad. It's very tactful, but... Hmm. Well, apparently she's been there for a few months. She's not a skeleton yet. So, um... So we can find our way back to this alley where the symbol is over there. Hmm. Well, apparently this is an Innsmouth courier truck. Having an interest here. And now that we've explored... Hello, Jack. We can meet this suspicious stranger. Lucas Mackey. Sorry to startle you. Insmith doesn't get a lot of visitors. New names spread fast. What are you doing in town, Jack? Hear about the missing Burnham boy? Not bad. I'm a private detective. My client's a friend of the Burnhams. Seen the latest press from Arkham? Your boy's been quite busy. Hmm. What about you, Mackey? You're obviously not a local. What's your business in town? <laughs> True enough, Jack. Nothing too exciting, I'm sorry to say. I'm a government factory inspector. They posted me in this rotten hole to check over the old Marsh refinery. Speaking of which, I've got an appointment with the manager, Jacob Marsh. Okay. Maybe I'll catch you later. It's all good That's the first friendly face I've seen in this damn town. But I've been in this business long enough to know he's hiding something. Bye, mysterious stranger, who totally doesn't look anything like H.P. Lovecraft. Also, if we duck here, we can get another look at the dark room we just escaped from. And make our way back to town. If I guess the guy that was patrolling this place is gone now. Federal Street. Oh boy. And we're a sort of vision of sorts. It kind of looks like we're seeing through the eyes of something else that's on the roof. You better keep your trap shut. I won't tell him anything. Oh boy. Hmm. I would try talking to that guy. Do you know the Burnham lad? He worked in the First National. Please stop bothering me, stranger. Yeah, he doesn't want to tell us anything, all right. Well, apparently the thing that if there was something on the rooftop, it would have been over there, but nothing's clearly visible. Also, these uh, bells, sounds of bells, are coming from this place. Do you know the Burnham lad? He worked. I never heard of no Burnham. <laughs> and this is the esoteric order of Dagon. Seems this grandiose structure is the esoteric order of Dagon. <coughs> and won't open. it won't open. So we can't check out what the inside of that place looks like quite yet. Well, we can check out what this alley is about. It's apparently there's a cop blocking it. That way is blocked by a police line. Excuse me, Constable. Jack Walters. Ah, uh, ropes. Alien ropes. What do you want? Could you help out a stranger to this fine port? Are you being funny? No, not at all. I'm looking for a Brian Burnham. He works locally. In the First National Grocery Store. Innsmouth don't take too kindly to them from out of town. Get lost, stranger. So, yeah, it's helpful as ever. What happened here, Constable? Nothing. Oh, swell. You can let me pass, then? No. You'll have to go another way. Ten feet Constable else. Ropes. What you after now? You ever meet Brian Burnham? 
I couldn't rightly say as I remember. The burglarizing of the First National is big news in the Arkham press. The Burnham lad must be one of your prime suspects. Any luck tracing his whereabouts? No. That'd be a matter for the Order. The Order? Isn't this a matter for the police? Yup. That too. Who is I the see. Order? Them's that look after affairs there in Innsmouth. And you'd mind your business not to be asking too many questions. Well, this is useful information for sure. Seems like the Burnham lad had some doll along for company on this little caper. All sorts of nonsense and hearsay be gossip about such affairs. But there was another robbery at Waits Variety Store. That much is true? That's for certain. How did they break in? Just down them there steps. Old Tom Waits had locked up for the night. Right. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? You know where I could find Mr. Oh boy, in the lots evening? of talking here. It's getting late. Folks who know what's good for them are generally bolted in their homes by now. Where is Waits house? Look, stranger. Get lost and stop your bothering me with questions. Well, it took him long enough to get to that point. He isn't gonna tell me anything useful. So yeah, this is Waits variety store on the right. It's a variety store. And it's closed. But apparently there's a small back door here that's it's also locked. locked. It's locked. It must lead to the back of a variety store. It's also locked. I'm looking for Brian Burke. Please stop bothering me, stranger. And no one wants to talk to us. That's no surprise. The sign says, Insmith Poorhouse, in memory of Lady Warns. And there's a poorhouse to the store. Well. It's nice of them to have that. So what if we explore by backtracking a little through the streets that the boss followed? To... Uh, the entrance of the town. Well, no, this is supposed to be in New England, actually. Around the Massachusetts area. Since uh, the town of Arkham, which is nearby, is canonically supposed to be in Massachusetts, according to Lovecraft's work. This town's deserted. Where is everybody? If you don't like it, just turn around and leave! And that kind of fits the more subtle themes that, you know, Lovecraft used in the story that this particular part of the game is based on, which is the Shadow of Rainsmith. Hmm. Where is everybody? It's very quiet. I can't be seen talking to you. I can be seen digging through a trash can, though. That's no problem. Seems most of the normal people in this town are too frightened to tell me much of anything. So there's a couple of alleyways here we can check out. And here we can see, um... Duck into the corner here to see a body being dragged off. That's a very nice sight. And uh, lurking around this alleyway, we can meet this woman. Who apparently looks very normal, and who it is apparently very difficult to trigger the conversation with. What's going on? Evening. There we go. Uh, the name's Jack Walters. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss. Miss will do for now. Welcome to Innsmouth, Mr. Walters. Thanks, I think. Take my advice. Do what you must and then leave. Tonight, this port does not cater well to visitors. While I appreciate your concern, miss, I can handle lousy hospitality. Very well, Mr. Walters. All right. Hello again. Mr. Walters. Look, miss, I only want a conversation. There's no harm in that, right? There's plenty of harm. It's not wise to be seen gossiping with outsiders. How about playing dumb for a few minutes? No. So this woman doesn't want to talk to us, but also apparently knows what's up. Can you at least tell me tell if you boy. knew the Burnham lad? He worked in the First National. Look here, Mr. Walters. I can't answer your questions, and your harassment is putting us both in danger. Please, leave me alone. In danger? From whom? The Order. Now go! Well, she isn't going to tell me anything useful right now. So I guess we've run out our 
lines of conversation with her for now. Hmm. Oh, well, there's the Marsh Refinery over there, but... I think if we go over here and check out the other alley that was connected to this one, or not connected, but that was across the street from that one. This one. Also, I hear an ambulance in the distance, I think. It might be a police car right now. We can find this Washington Street and uh, this fine character. Home of the mountain wave. When the driving rain of the hurricane puts the lights of the lighthouse out, and the growling thunder sounds is strong. Tell there probably won't be any SAWs in this story since, you know, it's kind of no mystery that Lovecraft was a huge racist, and a certain part of this uh, story is symbolism for prejudice against immigrants, but... Who's that now? Oh, can you spare a few pennies, young mister? I can give you something for your generosity. Who are you? Zadok, that be my name, though too few years it now. Zadok Helen! Do you know a Brian Burnham? Just a young'un. We're door the store. He's gone. Killed, I reckon. Killed? What makes you think that? Them's from out of town running a store. Taking business from the Order of Dagon. They'd not accept that. What else can you tell me about this port? You just bring old Zadok a bottle of something nice. And old Zadok will fill your ears. Well, as it happens. We do have this bootleg rum. Why, you're uncommonly kind, young fella. Here be a little something in gratitude that may help you in your search. And he's given us a key. But not only that. Since we've helped him out. Yeah. Now you be calling me crazy. Like them that star rumor in an anchorum in lip switch. But all they have seen all manner of wicked things since before you was born. Mm. Uh, old Captain Mobit where it all began. Telling desperate folks they'd order get better gods. Them's that would answer their prayers. Didn't the Christian folk of Innsmouth object to such blasphemy? Aye, they did. It were around 46 that many folks in town were done with Ovid and his ways. And all that wild preaching and too many missing, you see. Um, a party of good folk followed Captain Ovid's crowd out to the reef. Shots were fired. Next day, Obed and thirty of his fathers were in jail. And for weeks all were quiet. Till that artful night of forty-six. Them's out outside of reckon out it being a riot. But I'd seen them. Swarms of them. Look, old man. I don't have time to listen to these fishing tales. Oh, psst. It was a massacre. The jail thrown open, mounds of the dead and the dying, <gasps> shooting and screaming and shouting all across the town square. Come morning, the mess was cleaned up. Old Obed and his family takes charge, they did. Folks were told to keep shy as strangers if we were known what was good for us. Zadok. Who did all this? Who did all this? 
Said the old captain was now deeper in debt to his even gods. They were hankering for more than just sacrificing. Obed told folks they had to take the oaths of Dagon. What the hell are these oaths? You just ask old Wes about oaths of Dagon. Aye, he take the third oath. Just head over to his hole in the dark street. Then you'll see. For definite. He's given me a key to the town poorhouse. It could come in handy. So yeah, this guy stole us quite a bit. Where did Captain Ovid Marsh learn of these heathen matters? But we can learn even more. In war and foreign parts, the old fool I lent to ways of making gains, doing heathen things. He found a tribe of Canuckies in the South Seas led by a savage. Chief went by a name of Wallachia. And his tribe never went without food. For they had all the fish they could catch. Old Obed learned from his Wallachia that these things on this earth as most folks never heard about. Seems these Canuckies was worshipped in undersea gods with heaps of human sacrifices and other heathen things. But they was getting all kinds of favors in return. Plenty of fishing and even gold now and then. Human sacrifices? Maybe you've had just a bit too much. <clears throat> I don't blame you for not believing it, young fella. But just answer me this. Why did the Captain Obed roll out to the reef of Satan and chant a lot of rites and incantations in the dead of night? So loud you could hear them all over apart. He cast something in the water that eve, out the other side of Devil's Reef. Some kind of thingamajig crafted out of lead. It was given to him by Wallachia. So, what happened? Well, not long after that smoke started coming out of the chimneys at the old gold refinery, the Marsh family and those that had joined with Obed in his ways started prospering in the esoteric order of Dagon. Came into being with his Ethan Sermon. Uh, that shit they do. What kinds of ceremonies? Mm. Yeah. Get out of here, lad. Don't wait for nothing. They'll know now. Um. I think he's had his fill for the night. He's talked quite a bit. Zadok. Zadok. Oh no, he won't talk Curse anymore. Curse you, lad, for staring at me with them eyes. The old captain in hell. And he's staying there. He can get me. Uh, he can't. No, no, he can't get me. I had nothing done. I ain't done nothing or told nobody nothing. Well, he's told us quite a bit. Are you okay, old timer? Huh? Yeah, leave me there. So, yeah. I have a feeling that we're not the only ones that know that happened. And here's this woman. Mr. Walters, I must speak with you. It's Jack. And just hold on there a minute, sweetheart. Are you gonna even tell me your name? My name's Rebecca Lawrence, and unless you want to join Innsmouth's long list of missing, I'd urge you to follow me. Missing, huh? Like Burnham? Of that, I'm not sure. You'd be better off asking the Billingham's daughter, Ruth. She was dating Brian. What? Who's Ruth? Quickly, we don't have much time. You've got to follow me. Oh, time to Jack, have something else Kingsman uncovered. It's a strange place. There are things that have no business being here. Foul, reeking things. Strange. Trust me, I'm good with strange. That remains to be seen, but I can help you. My father discovered this strange sign while studying an old manuscript. It seems to ward off the more unusual elements in Innsmouth. 
Whenever you find one, you can use it to find a moment of the sanctuary. Now, I must leave before we're seen together. Alright. I've seen that eye-like symbol somewhere before, but never surrounded by a star. So we've uh, got a new version of the safe symbol, which we will use. And the difference between the... The eye fire symbol and the star symbol, which is the Lith's Elder Sign, is that the star symbol will actually ward off enemies, attacking enemies. And it will also help restore sanity a little bit faster, I think. Hmm. Well, there's another vision like that. Nothing to show for it, though. And the Marsh of Finery was over there, wasn't it? If we head in that direction... Can we learn anything else? Because this is kind of the end of the line as far as the streets go. Well, here's Mackie again. Hello, Mackie. Jack! Swell to see you again. Any leads on the Burnham case? Nope. Did you know the lad at all? Just pleasantries. Seemed a nice enough fella, if a little rough around the edges. Strange business, though. I'd never have fingered him as a crook. The First National was a well-run store. A rare thing here in Innsmouth. Okay, Mackie. Thanks. Goodbye, Jack. Be careful what you're doing. Very careful. Innsmouth's a dangerous place. I think we've got Not everyone that. who visits here ends up leaving by the old bus route. This Mackie character knows plenty, but I don't think grilling him for scraps of information is going to crack this case. So we're going to have to get his trust some other way. What do you know about the break-in at the variety store? Only what was in the press. You should speak to Thomas Waite. He owns the joint. Where's his place? I think the Waite's house is over on Dock Street. Near the back of the pool house. Thanks. Though I warn you, it's Miss Driven Old Waits a bit crazy. He doesn't talk a lot of sense. That's my sort of fella. He sounds just perfect. Yeah, for some reason, Mackie says, or Mackie's voice actor says, Waits instead of Wait. I'm not sure if that's on purpose or what, but. What's this Jacob Marsh like? Ah, uh, he didn't show up for our appointment. Then again, the marshes never do. Seems like we're both having some lousy luck. I've only met Jacob the once. He's not the prettiest picture, and a real slimy character. Hmm. Yeah, the marshes are apparently awkward than everyone else. Hello, Jack. What's the government's interest in the marsh refinery, anyway? It's just domestic affairs. You ask a lot of questions, Jack. I'm a detective. What the hell do you expect? What you're after comes under official secrets, if you know what I mean. But I can tell you that our government has become increasingly suspicious of Insmith and the Marsh family. I've heard of the Marshes. Rumors of that family are rife, even on the streets of Arkham. None of what's said is pleasant. That I can believe. The Marshes have been ruling this port for nearly a century. Ever since that plague swept these streets in the 40s. A plague? Is that why the place is so deserted? Mass has died, so that would figure. There's gossip that old Captain Obed Marsh brought the disease onto this port from foreign trade. Deliberately. Oh my god. Totally. Is that why so many of the townsfolk are suffering from that hideous affliction? Perhaps. Those from out of town call it the Insmith Look. So that bizarre appearance that some people have, the insmooth look, might have been caused by Obed Marsh. Where did you else? say Waite's house was again? No, just directions. I think it's over on Dock Street, near the back of the poor house. Well, it's time for us to be in our way over there. Or we can get some more background information from Rebecca. Jack, we can't be seen talking together. What is it? Why do you stay in Innsmouth, Rebecca? My grandfather, John Lawrence, was editor of the Innsmouth Courier. He was murdered in the slaughter of 46. He had always despised the marshes and their blasphemous doings. 
and it was he who led the party out to the reef that night. They arrested Captain Marsh and his order, and tossed them in the old jailhouse. A few weeks later, my grandfather was dead. My father saw him die. Him and many others burned alive in the courier's basement. All the more grounds to leave. To leave would be to fail my own legacy. I have a duty to protect the good in Innsmouth. At least what little good remains. So apparently one of the corpses down in the courier basement may have been Rebecca's grandfather. She knows plenty, but I need to have a look around myself if I'm gonna crack this case. Can we learn anything else from her though? Rebecca, maybe you know. What happened at the variety store? Ah, Tom Waits' place. The gossip on the streets is that the store safe holds a great treasure. Since the order got wind of the rumors, they've been desperate to get their filthy hands on it. But it seems they can't get close. Odd. You suppose Burnham knew about it? Maybe he pocketed it before breezing out of town. I don't know, Jack. He'd only been in town a few months, and we can't be certain he even managed to leave. Ruth Billingham must be involved in all of this somehow. She was desperate for a way out of Innsmouth. What do you know about her? Only that she and Brian were close, much to the Order's disapproval. You should speak to Tom Waits. Find out for certain if the treasure's gone. Where can I find him? He lives on 803 Dock Street, just by the back of the old town poorhouse. So we got directions for Waits, please, yet again. Where did you say I could find Waits again? So let's actually be on our way. On to that place. Or we could check out the uh, basement here to find a, a swinger. Just hang it out, you know. Get it? Hang it out. I'm gonna stop. Anyway, let's actually go find Waits now. Also, I'm pretty sure... Um, Pariah is a word that comes from um, old uh, Hindu Brahmanism, and it pretty much means uh, someone who's shunned. So let's go and um, unlock the way to the poorhouse, which we've been able to do since we had, or since we got the key from Sadok. Oh boy, people are getting suspicious. And actually see it's if we can find lock. this Thomas Wade character. So let's load the next part of the game, which is the poorhouse. Yep, we're sure loading and now it's loaded, alright. If I see you without fire, I'll report your order. Oh that say nothing. Well, we got that scene yet again, but with a different person this time. Where's everybody? It's very quiet. Just leave me be, stranger. So yeah, no one wants to talk to us. What else is new? What if we make it to the end of this place? Well, oh boy. Do you need any help? I guess not. The disease is rampant in this town. So let's. It won't open. Stay away from the plague it people. Budge. And get here to what I believe is Dock Street. Feeling I'm being watched. We're being watched. Hmm. Well, here's this guy. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. Can't say I noticed what you're saying, stranger. Hmm. It's the entrance to the town poorhouse. Hello. Well, we can't close the door after us, I guess. And uh, I think this little uh, extra. Easter egg or something we can catch if we move quickly here. Because I'm pretty sure if we move forward we're gonna get another one of these visions, yes. Something watching from above. And this time old lady passed away, we can actually catch a glimpse of what it was if we catch out the window. Look enough. out the window. I think that's like the only time that jumps to mind where we can actually do that, there, but old timer? Nothing. I'm just looking. What you doing in old Warren's house, young feller? This hole is for the broke and the dying. I'm trying to find Dock Street. It's out back of the house. 
Everything in Innsmouth is rotten and dying. Windows boarded up, and all sorts of curious barking and crawling around black cellars and attics. How would you like to be living in a town like this, fella? It would be a learning I've been experience. More welcoming places. I don't think he's been outdoors for years. He isn't gonna know anything. So let's just leave him be and continue on our quest. Hmm. Oh boy. Realistically animated moths, I see. Apparently very good at avoiding the flame. <laughs> this almshouse is home to the old and the destitute. Well, apparently sleeping beds ridden with bugs like that. I don't even care. Oh well, I guess that's realistic. So let's uh, quietly lift another one of these medical boxes. I'm sure they won't need it. Her sleep is restless and erratic. I can tell that from one second of observation. She's broken cardboard boxes to add to the mood. And these weird kind of gas lamps, I guess, coming out the walls. Oh boy, she's the old dead. Woman's dead. No one's gonna do anything, I guess. And why would they? they? Won't budge. Oh boy, we're starting to get low on sanity, I guess. Didn't go through that quickly enough. It won't open. But we're going back to normal, all right. So let's go down the fire escape, which is a one-way thing, and get a bit of where to go from looking down. It's kind of weird. Uh, and here's another woman. She's got the instant look. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. And see if I know what you're saying, Frank. Bit more than the other people we've met. And once again, there's a few places to go, but it won't budge. Only one that will actually let us in. It won't budge. Hmm. There's a convenient barricade at the end of the street, but this is Dock Street, I guess. There's an alley leading out, I believe, back into. Oh boy, there's a couple of dead people there. I'm pretty sure that if we don't catch this scene now. Jesus, those people have been ripped apart. Well, better not make any other comment on that. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that if we don't go there before this scene, we'll never find out where there's blood splattered all over the walls, but this is the wait house. Hello there, little lady. Hi, sir. Are your parents at home? Daddy's at work, and Mummy's upstairs, in the attic. She's been bad. I see. So, what's your name, little lady? Ramona. Well, Ramona, could you get your Mommy for me? Nope. Mummy bites. Daddy says we've got to keep her up there for her own good. Excuse me? When I go near the door, she growls. I don't love Mummy like I love my Daddy. You don't say. Ramona, I really need to speak to your daddy. Do you know when he'll be home? Soon, I think. You can wait inside if you like. Daddy won't mind. I'm drawing pictures with my crayons. That would be great. Thanks. Well, we get our way inside, I guess. Place over while I've got the chance. I had a chance to snoop around, I guess. The little girl won't mind. Nothing of interest. Apparently, nothing of interest. Pictures of mountains. No oh boy. Oh boy. Those noises. So what's she up to? What are you to? drawing, Ramona? Pictures of mommy and daddy. I see. Also, apparently, the pentagram. Or pentacle, I guess. That's an interesting way to depict someone, but... A house plant. A house plant. It won't budge. And there's only one way to go. It won't budge. And that's upstairs. It won't budge. Some of the doors will budge. An old chest of drawers. Nothing of interest. Nothing of interest. And we get another vision, though. And here's a bolted door. The door's bolted shut. 
Let's see the bolt. It won't budge. But apparently it's the only way forward because I can unbolt the door. Oh boy. Hmm. And we hear some very inviting noises. Do that, why didn't she do that before? He's to me. Ten suddenly we're in, in the asylum in the present, or maybe in the past. It's not quite clear which trip to the asylum this is. Padlock is broken. So we can check out the room that that thing was uh, staying in. Looks like a diary. Can pick up a diary. And have no other comment about the room, There's I guess. There's blood and scrape marks on the walls. Mm. You have a very good eye for that, Walters. So let's check out what the dad has to say, because it sounds like his home. Last thing I loved away from me. I'm sorry. I didn't realize what was up there. What the hell was that thing? There's no time to explain. They'll be here soon. Listen to me closely. You've been the talk of the town all day, asking after the Burnham lad. I heard he never made it to Boston, that he was copped by the Order of Dagon. Did he pocket anything from the store's safe? Thankfully, no. It's sturdy. He'd never have wrenched it open with the crowbar. There's something in there that needs protecting from the order. You've got to get it out of Innsmouth. Take the key to the back of my store. The safe combination's in my diary, upstairs. Hurry, Jack! What the hell's in the safe, anyway? Well, something that will actually come in quite useful, You've but... You've too far this time, wait. We're taking you in for murder. You'll swing for this. Wait, he didn't do anything wrong. He killed his own daughter. His own flesh and blood. There's plenty wrong with that. I'm reckoning you do well to mind your own business, stranger. It ends must we handle things by the old ways. Well, well. Just suck potatoes to take her away. Now our protagonist is very quiet and proper in his diction. It's Ramona's coloring book. We can get her coloring book. It won't budge. And, well, we can't actually look at it. we we'll check it out in the documents. It says... Apparently... They're things from a nightmare. Very disturbing images, just take our word for it. And apparently we missed a newspaper. Burglary on the recently opened First National. Simply robbed his employer and fled, so... So, apparently the police in this town want to dismiss the case as something straightforward. Oh boy. And apparently Thomas White doesn't, didn't like his wife either. Doesn't care for the order. But apparently, oh boy, apparently Ramona will become something, and he doesn't hate her, or would have become. 
and he still uses the month, day and year as the four number combination for his save in that order starting clockwise, so you know, useful information. So maybe he would have had a chance to get away after a certain change came over here and... Oh yeah, well, one moment. And uh, she was taken away, but... Apparently no, that never came to pass because of what just happened. Also, uh, we're gonna get an introduction to the healing mechanics in just a second. Jack, Jack. Oh, thank God I found you. Waite's been arrested for the murder of his daughter. I know. It's my fault, Rebecca. What are you talking about, Jack? What's your fault? There was something in the attic. Some kind of animal. And I let it loose. It's all my fault. The police drag Waits off. He can't take the fall for this. He's done nothing wrong. We gotta do something. Guilty or not, the Order will see him lynched for it. There's nothing you can do. You must have taken quite a bang in there, Jack. Your head's bleeding. Yeah, I think I was out of it for a little while. I see you've got some bandages. Use them on your head. It'll help you heal. You're not losing too much blood. You won't need a suture. Thanks, Rebecca. So do we do this automatically, or do we have to initiate it? I guess we don't do it, oh well. Well, let's do the map transition back to the main part of the town. All the blood still all over the walls in this this alleyway. So hey, Spunk, long time no see. And uh, well, the way healing works is we get a wound right now. But we need bandages on our head, as you can plainly see. It's kind of look kind of fucked up, but we can heal from this if we just select that. And exit the pause menu. Get a little animation of Jack healing. Uh, another way we can do that is by just pressing the H key. And Jack automatically applies all necessary treatments, assuming that he has the, you know, supplies for it. Something that's kind of annoying is that uh, the maximum amount of each thing that we can carry is we can carry up to 10 bandages, 5 splints, 5 sutures, and 2 vials of antidote. But the thing is, we'll probably be needing more sutures and bandages, but something we can do is, if we wait a bit, uh, the suture wounds will actually migrate to bandage wounds from heavy bleeding to light bleeding, so we can uh, use that to our advantage. Also, I think it might be time to check will in. Will be leaving soon? This bus ain't going nowhere to light, fella. Engine's blown, you see. At the weight of morning. Is there another bus out of Innsmouth? No, but there's a hotel behind me. Gilman will have board for the night. Well, it's not really behind you, as to your right, but... Yep, there's no getting out of the town tonight, it seems, so we have to find board in the Gilman house. Now that we're actually interested in this... There's still some loose ends that need tying up before checking in for the night. But apparently we need to... Oh, that's right. We need to investigate the variety store. I completely forget about that. But once that's out of the way, we'll actually be able to check in for the night also. The whole way in this. The darkness doesn't help with determining where to go. So, let me see... We have the key unlocked. for this door now, so it's unlocked. And we were told to check out the safe in this place. So let's... as soon as we can find the way forward, alright. Oh boy, hang on a minute. Okay, good. Well, there's a woman right there apparently fiddling with the safe, but... Well, what else can we find out from this place? Hmm. 
Well, apparently nothing, nothing of interest. Nothing of interest. We can steal another uh, medical box from the counter here. There's a door that won't open. Doesn't lead anywhere. Presumably it's the front one. So let's see what this woman's you up to. You don't look like your standard crook, sweetheart. Jesus, you crazy sap! Who the hell are you? Jack Walters, private detective. And considering your recent break in and entering, how about I ask the questions? Have you any idea who I am? No, and I really don't care. My family has influential contacts in the Order, so I'd advise you to mind your manners, sir. <laughs> I'm from out of town. The Order doesn't hold much sway with me. Really? Out of town, you say? How interesting. I'm Ruth. Ruth Billingham. Huh. You're Brian's broad. That figures. Brian? Uh, I don't believe I know a Brian. Yeah, right. I've been fed that line a thousand times, and for much better liars than you. Look, Ruth, the rumor around town is that your lover boy is in the hands of the Order. What? No, that's not true. They'll have him killed. It was all my idea. I just wanted a clean break from here. What do you want me to do? I don't know. You're the detective. You think of something. I'll be waiting out at the old fishing cannery the next two nights, just past the abandoned railway station to Rowley. Hmm. When you find him, give him this. He'll know it's from me. <laughs> no, I don't think there's any uh, big time voice actors in this, but I might be wrong. Also, here's a safe. We got the clue for it, I believe. On. wait, diary. You know that it's. Um, alright, this thing's warp around for some reason. But it's apparently Ramona's uh, date of birth. And apparently. she was. Uh, she had her 10th birthday yesterday. We're forced to assume that this diary was written today. So what day is it today? Would it be the 7th of February? I'm guessing yes, so that would make her birth date. The 6th of February of 1912? Yeah, 1912. And starting clockwise, that would be... 6th of February. Was it day, month, year, or month, day, year? Like this crazy... Oh well, let me try. Day, month, year. Uh, 12. No, I guess it's not. Never mind. I must have got something wrong. Well, uh... Hmm. Okay, month... Day... Year, there we go. Yes, that's it. So, apparently, we got another save sigil and... The very valuable book. The safe holds a heavily bound manuscript. The front is embossed with the words Book of Dagon. Book of Dagon. Well, let's go ahead and save now that we've obtained that. It's a translation of some ancient glyphs by the looks of it. Um, it shows up in the Mythos Thompson Manuscript uh, collection. Its cover is embossed with the title and tells of Dagon, some kind of ancient sea god, and his consort Hydra. And they are the greatest of the Deep Ones, who worship them with sacrifices and other rites. Their history sketches back to the remotest human origins. They have seen continents rise and fall. They are greatly revered for their age and size, but the greatest awe is reserved for Cthulhu, who sleeps in the underwater city of Rulia. But apparently the translation is not complete. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, I use day, or I guess the place I live, which, you know, Mexico uses day month here. It was pretty logical. Ascending order, not confusion. But I guess some people do it differently. It's getting late. 
I'd better find some place to check in for the night. So now we can actually go and check in at the hotel. But I don't think we can do anything about that since we're indoors. No time for uh, an interesting collection of scenes. Oh boy! Well, apparently, I interrupted whatever they were talking about. Bothering me, stranger. Well, it's time to get a room. It seems the bus has been delayed till morning. Is it, sir? That's an awful shame. Do you have board for the night? We've plenty on the top floor of the house. Night oh, views over the town, I'm told. Alright, it looked like a rave party was starting for a minute, but oh boy. Great. The, that sounds just swell. But it subsided. Hey, uh, you alright there, sir? Starting to look kinda funny there for a while. Face as white as bone and eyes as black as coal. Like you'd seen a ghost or something. Fine, thanks. It's just the sea air around these parts. It makes me queasy. The Innsmouth's breeze is not for your outsiders. Charlie, can you come with me? I need to be telling you something. Privately. Excuse me, sir. The Innsmouth law doesn't like to be kept hanging about. I'll be right back with you shortly. guys off to talk to the constable for a bit which gives us a chance to swipe this key the key to the back office and figure out what's going on in the back office which is right here it's unlocked well if we look around we will see mm, pretty normal stuff on this side except for that this office is a mess it's a mess with a broken window and everything but nothing of interest here what if we go into the actual office itself? Well then, we will see some extra shotgun there shells. There are severed body parts strewn all over the office. And some severed body parts. What in God's name has been happening in this place? Like a head in a box. That's a very nice sight. And a head in a shelf. There are severed body parts strewn all over the office. And maybe some arms sticking out of a drawer. That's a great way to, to store them. Oh boy. And a book that we can get. I wonder what secrets this book holds. And uh, the hatchet is a lot of cleaver. Blood. I'm not touching it. Or a hatchet, as Jack calls it. And we're starting to lose sanity, so let's get out of there. But not before reading the book. Oops, that's right, it says. I kept her going as long as I could, oh boy. So apparently, this guy's quite keen on torture and eating the organs of the recently killed. Flesh moved on its own, oh boy. The new gag worked much better, well that's nice. When hardware updates actually pay off. So let's uh, quietly and discreetly walk away from that. If you just follow me, sir. I'll show you to your lodgings. I heard there was a killing over the old Waits house tonight. They reckon the old fool killed his own daughter. She had to how toe it in the blood, they says, and had to be dragged away, screaming and crying. I reckon there'll be a lynching for what he done. In this town, it won't surprise me. Tell me, I don't know anything about Imperial, pretty much. All I do know is. Some of the standard uh, numbers for like people's height. Like most people are between five and six feet. That is the extent of my knowledge, pretty much. I don't know anything about yards or inches or miles. I don't know anything about that. 
Or fractions. Pallet, sir. You need to have yourself some rest. Sleep well. And keep down the racket. Our sinsmith are quiet fall. Yeah, I believe you. Especially after that. <coughs> so, uh, this next um, part is going to be a recreation of the end scene from the novella. It's locked. The Shadow of Rainsmith. But uh, we need to make a little bit of preparation in order for it to be any kind of success. It won't open. Hmm. Well, the only door that will open is the room to door 402, which connects with ours. Hmm. It won't open. The rest of these doors are closed. It won't open. And won't open. It won't open. Hmm. It won't budge. So let's assume that we're gonna be very mindful of our privacy and bolt all the doors that may lead into our bedroom. And um, can we get this out of the way? No, we cannot. Yes, we don't think it's necessary quite yet. Let's close our door and bolt it too. And after that, can't see um, anything of use. Bit of exploration. Let's go ahead and turn in for the night. Better. Not exactly safe, but the best I'm gonna get in this infernal town. Everything's more depressing than expected, that's always a good thing. They're not trying to hide- oh, no, they are trying to hide something. But what? Well, apparently the guy we're looking for might still be in the jailhouse. Sadok Allen, the old Rummy. Well, yep, he told us quite a lot of interesting stuff. And yeah, there was a massacre in 1846. And something came out of the attic. We can't really forget that. And, oh boy. Yeah, we're still getting all those weird visions and nightmares. This spooky vision thing is acting up worse than ever. And there's actually a justification for that, but we're not gonna learn that until the very end. I'm so edgy, I can hardly think straight. Finally, I could get some decent bourbon. Maybe I could stop crawling. But we need to get out of here. In the morning. Presumably after we track down the kid, but...